Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a video on 1 Corinthians 13.10 and uh, the traditional interpretation of that verse. So I have it titled, Concerning That Which is Perfect. So we'll start in 1 Corinthians 13.8, okay? So it says, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Okay, so the traditional interpretation of that verse, of that passage of scripture, is that that which is perfect is the completed New Testament. It's the Holy Bible, the, the complete canon of scriptures. So... The Baptists typically teach, which I consider myself a Baptist, I have nothing against Baptists, but uh, the Baptists typically teach that uh, that which is perfect is Scripture. So that's why we don't see prophecies today, that's why speaking in tongues is gone today, and everything that it mentioned. Which, I don't believe that tongues or anything like that are for today, and I can prove that with Scripture, just this passage is not referring to that. That's not how you can disprove tongues today. And I'll be proving that in uh, this video. So the number one thing that they argue to my interpretation is that Jesus is that which is perfect. So they'll say that, well, Jesus can't be that which is perfect because he can't be a neuter noun. That is a neuter noun. But if we go to 1 John 1... 1 through 3 real fast. All right, this is John speaking about Jesus Christ. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is referred to as that which two times in those three verses. So he can be referred to in the neuter form. All right, I want to go back and look at 1 Corinthians 13 again real fast. We'll look at verse 12 this time. <clears throat> Paul says, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. So Baptists say, For now we see through a glass darkly, Scripture not completed, but then face to face, Scripture that is completed. Now I know in part, Scripture that's not completed, but then shall I know even as I, even as also I am known. And that's when scripture is completed. That's how they interpret it. But I'm going to show you that that's, that can't be interpreted that way. And I'm going to prove it because the glass that we see through darkly is scripture. And it's the scripture that they had back then. It's the scripture we have now. It's the Holy Bible. And the term face to face in scripture is never a reference to anything written or scripture in general. We'll look at 2 John 1, 12 real fast. All right, this is John again, 2 John 12. He says, Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face, that our joy, that our, that our joy may be full. So notice he says that face to face is him speaking to you face to face. It's not writing unto you with paper and ink. So the term face to face cannot be scripture. We'll look at third John uh, 13 and 14 as well, which he says, I had many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee, but I trust I shall shortly see thee and we shall speak face to face. Peace be to thee, our friends salute thee, greet the friends by name. So we see again that face-to-face -face is not a reference to scripture, it's not a reference to anything written, and that the scripture is the glass that we see through, that we look through darkly, and then when Christ returns, or when we get raptured, or whatever that may be, then we are face-to-face, -face, 
that's when all those things that are in part shall be done away with. We're going to read James 1, 23 really fast. For if any be a hearer of the words of their scripture, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. 24. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So notice that that's the glass that we see through darkly. That's, that's the scripture. That's not face to face. Face to face is going to be not when scripture is fulfilled, scripture is complete or anything like that. It's going to be when Jesus Christ returns, when we are face to face with our Lord and Savior. A couple of other quick references I want to look at is Exodus 33:11. We'll look at that one first. And Exodus 33:11 says, "And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend." So not in writing, not through scripture. It was face to face. He he literally spoke to him face to face. Another reference of face to face. So it's not scripture. We can see that. And just to seal the deal, let's look at Deuteronomy 5:4 real fast. All right. Deuteronomy 5:4 says, "The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire." So that is a face to face conversation it's it's speaking face to face with god with jesus christ it's not scripture it's not the full canon of scripture it's not the completion of the new testament face to face is a reference to being in front of jesus christ being with jesus christ being face to face with jesus christ exactly how as it sounds i'm going to prove it further with a couple of uh scriptures that we can look at first i'm going to look at revelation 11:3 real fast all right. Revelation 11.3 says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, which is Mo Moses and Elijah, which I'll make a video on because I know there's a lot of confusion about that and a lot of different theories. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. So there's prophecy. And have power over waters to turn them to blood. And to smite the earth with all the plagues. Oh, with all plagues as often as they will. So there's some signs happening in the tribulation. But we have the complete Bible right now and it's not even the tribulation yet. So, 1 Corinthians 13.10 can't be referring to the completed canon of Scripture. Another place I'll look is uh, Joel 2.28 real fast. Alright, Joel 2.28 says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. So, Notice that they're prophesying, they're having dreams, they're seeing visions of things that will come to pass. That's prophecy right there. So, again, 1 Corinthians 13.10, it was not the Bible that is that which is perfect. The Bible is perfect, I'm not arguing that. In the context, though, 1 Corinthians 13, the Bible is not what's being referred to. What's being referred to is the second coming of Jesus Christ. So, we see that in the tribulation, signs will come back. We will have these things, and Joel 2.28 was actually referenced by uh, Peter when he was questioned about speaking in tongues. So, it, they might speak in tongues when that, uh, when that verse comes to pass. When that verse is fulfilled, speaking in tongues might come back as well. And I think it's safe to say that the 144,000 Jews in the tribulation as well, I think they'll have the signs and wonders of the apostles from Mark 16. And uh, the reason for these things is found in 1 Corinthians 1.22. We'll read that real fast. This is why the signs will come back during the tribulation. And it says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. So the Jews require a sign. That's why signs, the, the gift, the sign gifts of the apostles will come back during the tribulation because right now Israel is set aside. God has blinded them in part and salvation has turned to the Gentiles to uh, provoke them to jealousy, Paul says. 
So we see that the signs will come back during the tribulation. So 1 Corinthians 13.10 is a reference to Jesus Christ returning. It's not a reference to our perfect Bible. Even though it is perfect, it's not what Paul was referring to as that which is perfect. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps out. I hope it uh, encourages you to study your Bible more. I hope it just helps clear some things up. And uh, thank you for watching. God bless.